Hello, welcome to News Center. I'm Pariksha Dutra. The nomination filing deadline for the Maharashtra Assembly election officially comes to an end this evening. However, the suspense over seat sharing across both camps continues from BJP leaders contesting on a Sena ticket to leaders switching camps in the 11th hour to last minute changes in candidates. Maharashtra election season continues to be an unpredictable one as ever. As expected, the BJP is contesting over 50% of the seats, leaving the remaining for its allies, the Shiv Sena and Ajit Pawar's NCP. Congress has clearly emerged as a big brother when it comes to ticket distribution in the opposition camp. Remember, Congress had the highest seat tally in the state in the Lok Sabha election. Uddhav Thakre's Shiv Sena and Sharad Pawar's NCP are contesting an equal number of seats. From what we know so far, talks are still on for a couple of seats. Joining us right now to discuss the seat sharing in Maharashtra and the trouble within the two camps are senior journalists Ninad Seth and Sanjay Jog. Uh, Sanjay Jog, if I can begin with you. Uh, clearly, all is not well in the BJP camp. There are rebels. There are people who have gotten angry, like Gopal Shetty, who feel that outsiders have been uh, planted to fight elections. Then you've got Ajit Pawar, NCP, who have gone ahead and nominated Nawab Malik for a certain seat, despite opposition from the BJP. Uh, things are not looking very good, and it seems that the BJP is trying to keep the flock together. What's your view? 100%. Parishit, you know, initially when the talks were on, both sides were claiming that they will be able to arrive at seat sharing before Diwali or before Dasra. Nothing happened. Till today, there are about 10 to 18 seats on which both the sides are locked in on an, I mean, in a negoti hard negotiation. Of course, you know, there, there have been sent messages to from both the camps to file the nomination, being today is the last day. Very interestingly, as usual, BJP has, you know, stolen the show in the sense uh, as they would like to be projected themselves as a big brother. So they have got about 148 seats, the candidates that they have officially announced, and four they have allocated to smaller parties, which they claim as an ally. So total is about 152 by BJP. Then comes basically Shibasena. You know, Mr. Ekna Chinde was not at all ready to get below 80 seats. So he has stuck to his guns and he has managed to get about 80 or seats. So also, you know, Ajit Pawar, like he started with 90 seats, but now zero down uh, below that because there was no other go but to sacrifice himself and he has managed to get out 51 seats. Same scenario continues with basically the Mahavika Sagadi. I mean, there was much of, you know, enthusiasm after Mahavika Sagadi backed 30 odd seats in Lok Sabha elections. And as if, you know, the talk within the Mahavika Sagadi was that it is just a kind of a formal, you know, just a mere formality to elections to take place and they are going to swear in. But nothing happened. There have been so many contradictions, particularly between the Congress and the Shiva Sena. But ultimately, Congress has stuck to its guns and managed to emerge as a big brother. So they have got about 103 or 6. Then comes, of course, Shiv hmm. Sena, around 85 seats. Right. And so also, 83 seats by uh, Sharad Paul, late, uh, basically the NCP. Just to put you in perspective, both are definitely quite desperate uh, to get the power. Mahayuti is going much of on the development cards with that the 1 lakh crore freebies. On the other hand, Mahavika Sagadi is definitely there to mm. checkmate about the issue of corruption, the splashing of money at costing at the cost of the fiscal management and prudence. And there are a couple of, you know, inside stories right. which are emerging about the contradictions within. All right, let me go across to Ninat Said. Ninat Said, Ajit, Ajit uh, Ashi Sheller of the BJP was very clear that they do not want Nawab Malik to be contesting on... Uh, a ticket from the alliance. Now, Ajit Pawar's NCP has gone ahead and nominated him. Why do you think this has happened despite opposition from the BJP? And what does this show uh, in terms of the consensus and both the allies, the Ajit Pawar NCP faction and the BJP being on the same page and also the Shinde Sena? See, uh, Parikshit, what it shows is the following. This is a very sad perversion, actually, of the democratic process. Here we have 40 or 60 families which are coming together and uh, fighting for their own power, masquerading as political parties. And therefore, you are seeing all these kind of shifts and shifting sand and shifting people just before the elections. This is not a dance of democracy, but democratic, uh, democratic warlord, if you like, 
going to war. And here, the most interesting thing is the death of ideology. And like you said, uh, in any ordinary circumstance, BJP would have had a very big problem with Nawab Malik's nomination. But since ideology is taking a back seat uh, for political convenience and what uh, what I personally perceive as family uh, family fiefdoms fighting as an aggregate uh, masquerading as political party, Maharashtra becomes very, very odd in that uh, sense for Indian democracy. Having said that, there's an irony, I think, which is under uh, uh, under play here. When the two camps fight, if you like, on the battlefield, uh, the two weaklings, the Ajit Pawar NCP in, in the ruling alliance and, and the uh, <clears throat> NCP in the opposition alliance, uh, how badly they perform uh, respectively will probably determine the outcome. One interesting other thing I would like to say is that there is, if you were on the ground, which I was, uh, you know, last week in Maharashtra, uh, the, the the RSS, ironically, uh, in a in, in a fight where where, where ideology is taking a backseat, is becoming very active and could be very interesting for BJP going forward. Right. Uh, let me go back to Sanjay Jog. Sanjay Jog, if we speak about the Congress uh, today, Nana Patole, the chief of the Maharashtra Congress, went on record to diffuse some tensions. Uh, he was responding to questions about trouble between the Congress and the Uddhav Bal Thakre Sena. Uh, are there real signs of trouble between the two allies? We've also seen Congress replacing candidates at least three times in Maharashtra. Absolutely, Parikshit. You know, since the talks had begun, the initial problem was just restricted to Congress and Uddhav Bal Thakre Sena. NCP, has, led by Sarat Pawar, had no issue. They had also clarified that they are not at all interested in the chief minister's post, but the real, you know, kind of tug of war which was going on was between Congress and uh, the Balasev Thakkadeh Shibhisana, which continued even yesterday. Yesterday also, Nana Patelo had to tell officially on record to Sanjay Rao that if we are going to fight and we are fighting against Mahayuti, so there needs to be some kind of, you know, a cohesive approach. So let's discuss and arrive at a kind of a formula which will be acceptable to both. You know, this is very quite interesting which is happening in Mahavika Sagari. You know, Congress initially went on, you know, announcing a couple of seats, but they had to backtrack because of a strong opposition from local Karakarta. Today also, in Nashik, more than 65 office bearers have just now resigned, protesting against one of the nominees which was, you know, announced in the list. So also in Shiv Sena. You know, Uddhav Thakre had to take a serious note and just simply remove the three of its district unit chief because of a likelihood of a rebellion and intra-party feud. So I think all is not well in Mahavika Sagari, so also in Mah Mahayuti. Look at Gopal Shetty, a two-time MP, basically a very, you know, quite a sensitive and alert kind of a representative of people. You know, he was denied the Lok Sabha seat before Piyush Goen. He sat quiet after Devendra Fadnavis pacified him. This time round, he was quite interested. He had a series of meetings mm. saying that he is definitely like to contest from Borivli, but he, which was denied. And that's why he came out very angrily that Borivli is not the Dharamshala where anyone can come and fight the election. So also with Atul Shah, right. I've seen him, you know, working with Gopinath Munde, Pramod Mahajan, Javanti Ben Mehta. He is a resident of Mumbai, Mumbai Devi. He also took an objection saying that election is not like a musical chair. So I think there is a rebellion which is growing despite Amit Shah during the last week meeting, the three of the leaders had held uh, with him in Delhi has categorical said, please focus on major thing that there should not be any rebellion basically to puncture uh, the prospect. And I think both the sides definitely going to have a tough time to cool down because fourth is the you know a withdrawal day okay. for the nominations. Okay. All right. Let me let me go across now to uh, uh, Ninad Seth. Ninad, if we were to ask you, who do you think holds the edge at this point? Clearly, there is some trouble in both the camps, both the alliances, which are fighting for the Maharashtra Assembly election. Who do you think has a bigger advantage at this point? I think that BJP has been uh, smart in terms of its coalition. It has given more seats than one expected to some of the coalition partners. If the coalition post the election stays intact. Uh, that will give BJP a greater, more flexible, uh, you know, political space. A, B, uh, you know, the Maratha vote, uh, which has uh, gone away from the BJP during Lok Sabha, uh, it will be interesting to see whether the outreach by the RSS and the others brings that vote back to the BJP or part of that vote back to the BJP, or does BJP do a radical Haryana kind of uh, coalition of uh, 
uh, castes where uh, you know the number of other castes, the OBCs, uh, uh, come together to marginalize or or make less relevant the Maratha vote. At the minute, I would still say that if you add Prime Minister Modi's uh, uh, residual charisma, which you can never, in my opinion, uh, underestimate in any election, then currently the BJP coalition seems to have the upper hand. So you're saying the BJP coalition has the upper hand and we have been seeing Amit Shah hold direct meetings with Devendra Fadnavis, with Eknath Shinde and Ajit Pawar as well. Sanjay Jog, uh, what do you think? Do you think BJP, Amit Shah, the Prime Minister will be able to quell all rebellion within the party ranks? We had also seen the Mahayuti uh, attaining a low tally in the Lok Sabha elections. Uh, something that doesn't all go well. But since then, we've seen them working hard in Haryana. We've seen the RSS also coming together. Do you think putting all of the organizational might of the BJP and the RSS, uh, the BJP would have an edge in this election or the Congress? Parikshad, I will not say BJP has got an edge, but certainly RSS and its parivar, you know, there are a couple of organizations, to, to I count about 36 odd, they are already, you know, are, are in fact are on an action mode working from, you know, in Maharashtra, there are a lack of booths. So the RSS in the entire network is, you know, integrated with the local leadership of the BJP, working quite hard, uh, learning lessons from the Lok Sabha debacle. And, you know, they would definitely like the voters to, to come in a big way uh, to support not just the BJP, but the ally. So certainly they are definitely making all effort. But, you know, there is another point which needs to be taken into account, the OBC consolidation. You know, OBC, that is what is known as a Madhav factor. Mali, Dhangar and Wanzari have always been a supporter of BJP. But because of the recent protest between the Marathas and the OBC, there has been a huge division and a divided kind of a house. So how BJP and the RSS Parivar uh, try to have a kind of a Haryana, you know, experiment in Maharashtra that needs to be what? And the another factor is the manner in which Mr. Sharad Pawar has also tried and had gone for a micromanagement, bringing all the sections together. So also, uh, just to tell you that Congress is basically, although maybe a kind of a divided house, uh, Rahul Gandhi is going to come out uh, for a seven-day long Bharat Jodo Yatra again during the election campaign. And that will be focused on basically Marathwala, 46 states and 62 seats, which earlier used to be the Congress's bastion. But from 2014, BJP has made sufficient inroad. So, you know, there is going to be an interesting kind of a shape up which is happening from the both sides. It will be, you know, to be watched yes, who will have an edge in the days to come as the campaign picks up from 4th of November. Okay. Uh, Ninad said, my final question to you would be, uh, what are the issues you think will really matter in the election now, in the next one month or so? This is a very interesting election because it is more a transactional election rather than a transformational election for India's richest state. And I think that itself is slightly sad. Uh, three issues stand out. Uh, there is uh, a, a very long pending uh, problem of uh, agricultural, uh, you know, uh, uh, backwardness. I mean, there is also a lot of stress for, for, for a lot of farmers. I personally think that agricultural uh, outreach is a, a very important issue. Uh, an understated issue is also the issue of creating non-agricultural, non-farm jobs. Uh, you know, there is a perception that Gujarat and, uh, and Karnataka and other states are getting those factories, uh, whereas Maharashtra is losing out. And I think that's going to be a very important uh, election issue in, in many of the constituencies. Lastly, I would say that, you know, uh, the inflation, especially food inflation, which we do not usually report, you know, it's very surprising that we don't report food inflation, but food inflation, at least when I traveled last week in Maharashtra on the ground, uh, in the rural and semi-rural places, uh, there seems there seem to be some kind of an anger against food, food inflation. I believe that, uh, you know, uh, growth, in other words, uh, in, in Maharashtra is going to be one of the deciding factors. Who do the who does the voter trust to bring growth back to let growth be sustainable? Uh, the, I think it is going to be very interesting for a for a, a you know a bigger big industrial state like Maharashtra. All right. On that note, we take a short break. But Ninat said, uh, Sanjay Jog, thank you very much for joining us on the program on News Center, telling us what's at stake uh, for the battle in Maharashtra. We are taking a short break right now, but uh, when we return, we'll get you lots more news from across the country. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. You're watching News Center. India's leading passenger car maker Maruti Suzuki has warned of weak demand after the festive season. The car maker, which came out with its second quarter number, saw its margin slip to a five quarter low. This was largely impacted by low volumes. Sudarshan Kumar joins us now with the details. Sudarshan, run us through the numbers. The biggest car maker of the country, Maruti Suzuki, has reported earnings for Q2, that is quarter ending September, and those earnings look largely below estimates. And after the earnings, we saw a sharp fall in the stock. It has fallen up to 6%, but made a huge recovery. It has recovered almost 3% from days low after management commentary. But first, talking about the numbers, profit was impacted by indexation, benefit withdrawal, and LTC tax that was announced in the budget. Revenue was dragged by below than expected volumes. EBITDA has come in at a three-quarter low. Margin has slipped below 12 percent and it's, a, it's at a five quarter low impacted by flat realization and high promotion expense talking about some internals volumes were down two percent year on year while sequentially it was up four percent realization again it's flat sequentially but year on year it's up more than two percent gross margin though sees a minor improvement now talking about the commentary that company spoke after the earnings and commentary regarding the demand was largely positive and it's taken positively by the investor and that's the reason we saw a huge recovery in the stock what does companies say it says focus of the investors should be on retail numbers and not the wholesales and for the festive seasons that till Diwali companies looking at the retail sales of almost 3 lakh units resulting in a growth of almost 14% also it has talked about discounts and it believes that it should not be more than the before that company has recorded recorded in the past and lastly talking about the inventory it expects inventory to come down to 30 days by the end of the month so overall Q2 earnings were largely below estimates but commentary related to festive demand might be taken positively by investors. In this festival season, we have seen a good traction in the market. The retail sales went up by 14%. The new bookings crossed uh, 4 lakhs and about 15,000, 16,000. So at the moment, the order book is quite healthy. We have yet to see what happens after the uh, festival season ends uh, with Diwali or a uh, few days after Diwali. We don't know. But uh, overall, uh, we are not, uh, I mean, the industry is not very optimistic that uh, there's going to be a great uh, upsurge in demand. And speaking of the festive season, hotels are starting to see strong demand. Speaking to Madhya Mujawar, Hyatt India MD Sanjay Sharma said that the demand is largely driven by domestic customers. He added that social events and weddings have also had a higher share in the group's revenue. As India is concerned, the uh, you know the sentiment is very very good based on the uh, you know the infrastructure, the environment, the initiatives of the government, and also based on the kind of domestic demand we are getting from our, uh, our own people in India, how they are traveling, how their mindset has changed for travel, how their mi mindset has changed to spend more time with the family, and also going to uh, new destinations and exploring what is available there. It's like, dekho apna desh kind of a thing. There's so much to see in our country yeah. that we have not really unraveled. So if you could give us a sense of how the growth trajectory has been in the last few years and what you're expecting this year as well, that if you could add, uh, sure. If, so let's go back to you know 22, 23. So in 23, that we saw that our rev bar grew by 33 percent. 33 percent is a number which is phenomenal. And on top of that, when we look at 24, we are growing in double digits, and the year is is going like that. And if you look at socials, events, because that are also the pulse of the general uh, you know uh, mindset of uh, uh, people there. Even that has grown by 25%. So our contribution from social and weddings has also grown by 25%. So what would be the holiday season, advance bookings uh, be like? The now? pace is very good. Uh, the other good part is that the, uh, the pace of bookings has actually, the window has shortened. So even if, uh, you know, uh, uh, earlier the pace was far uh, lengthier, but now we see that all the pace is even better than previous years. And on top of that, you are also getting bookings in short pace. So it is like kind of a double effect in okay. today's time. So, okay. so very healthy uh, season coming up. And uh, the other good part is that if you look at the Indian holidays, they are finishing within this month, within October. And Diwali is on the 1st of uh, yeah. November. Yeah. So from that onwards, we get a pure uh, business a busy, period. A busy, busy period, period yeah. for yeah. hotels. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we are so thankful for that. 
are people ready to spend on a particular price or the price doesn't matter now so uh, see people are looking at time together now there is a price to it and it's also what you it's about uh, it's about value you give to the price it's about experiences people are paying for experiences people are paying for togetherness mm. people are paying for differentiation and staying with the festive centimeter india's alcohol and beverage industry is pulling out all stops this festive season this includes among others launching new premium editions and banking on record sales shivani bazaar joins us now shivani what's keeping the alcohol beverage makers spirits high well cheers to the festive season that's raising the bar literally india's alcohol makers are toasting to the record sales and new launches hoping to make this the most spirited quarter yet this quarter alone typically brings in about 30% of the year's volume in the prestigious above category fueled by celebrations like diwali and new year let's start with radico khetan which has seen steady growth in its premium segment during the festive months marking a 15 to 20% volume increase year on year over the last few years meanwhile amrut distilleries is also celebrating success both at home and abroad after 5 years of 30% festive season growth this season radico khetan is launching the gold edition of jaisalmer indian craft gin aiming to capture the high spirits of the festivities with a product as luxurious as its audience amrut is also making headlines with its limited 2 indies rum the, uh, which is premium blend is specifically crafted to appeal to india's growing taste for luxury spirits while enhancing amrut's profile on the global stage as well now indri is also making waves winning a prestigious gold medal at the whiskies of the world award for its diwali collectors edition 2024 the award uh, not only underscores india's presence in the world of fine whiskies but also highlights the trend towards premiumization one that is sweeping the industry now let's zoom out to the broader industry trends last year Festive season saw a 12% spike in premium and luxury spirit sales according to CIABC data. With consumer spending high, 2024 is poised to outdo that with even more new launches and robust demand. Many in the industry are leaning into the premiumization strategy, hoping that these high-end products will help offset inflationary costs that have been cutting into the margins. Back to you. With that, to wrap on this edition of News Center, more news and updates continue right here.